What's up, guys? Welcome back to Mac Kite. This is Jake. And Dustin. And today we're here to give you our early impressions on the all new Duotone Evo D Lab. This is a kite we've waited a long, long time for. Uh, we saw Duotone introduce D-Lab or Alula with the Juice, and then they followed with the Neo, and now they finally gave us the kite we really wanted. The Evo, the all-arounder. Is it worth it? Dustin, what are your first impressions? Right off the bat, I had a session on a nine meter. Being a bigger guy, I immediately noticed the wind range is absolutely massive. Uh, Winds are crazy up here in Michigan. You're gonna get a vast amount um, of every condition. So right off the bat, uh, blown 25, no problems. But the wind did drop down into the teens for a second. That kite sits so far forward that it just has so much upwind drive, it's crazy. Um, so I was able to get back to where I started. No walk of shame, no nothing. So right off the bat, notice the wind range. Yeah. Um, and then second, I think I noticed how far that kite really sat in the wind window, you know, yeah. a bit more forward. So, um, yeah, those are the two big ones, I'd say, right off the bat. And that is one of the big benefits of the D-Lab material, is it does allow for a much smaller leading edge. Uh, so it's gonna be really stiff, uh, and it's, it's quite a small diameter when you compare it with other kites. Um, and the Evo, it's really, really apparent. Um, I wouldn't call it a super deep canopy, but relative to the leading edge, it looks rather deep. Uh, so it's it's really neat in that you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get a kite that really drives pretty far forward in the window, and that's what helps give you that upwind drive, that really great low end performance, um, as well as the performance on the top end that we'll get into. Um, but then you can also back off it, and it's a really playful, fun, deepish canopy kite, which I like. I think sometimes when you do have those leading edges that get really thin, that canopy kind of thins out, and I don't know, it feels a bit like a parachute, which is fun, but you're really yanking on the bar to turn it. And yeah. I didn't experience that with the D-Lab. I thought it was really, really fast turning. But yeah, to your point where it was really driving forward and working well in the nine meter size, people talk a lot about the Alula material, the D-Lab material, giving you a lot more on the low end. So yep. you did find that to be the case? Oh, totally. Yep, definitely. Uh, you know, the, it's so light, the kite just, it's lighter than gravity. You know, I'm on the beach trying to pump this thing up, it's just floating away as soon as I flipped it over. Gotta bury it with sand, crucial, for sure. Or have a sandbag or something to weight that thing down, because it's just gonna wanna take off on you. It does, I noticed that when I pumped it up, generally you can just face it against the wind, and it'll, it'll luff a little bit, but it won't move. And this was just scooting yep. right along the beach, uh, which is quite annoying when you've spent $3,000 on a kite. Uh, so as Justin <laughs> said, uh, I don't know, maybe this is where you bust out the sandbag, right? Yep. Uh, you know, as I put a scoop of sand with beach shells in it, I'm like, like please don't ah. rip the canopy. So yeah, so when I went out, I was uh, able to use the 13 meter. It was blowing, uh, I don't know, like 22, 24 yeah. in that range. Up and down, yeah. Um, so we were kind of appraising what kite I should rig. We saw a couple people on nines and tens, a couple people quite powered up on a 12. I'm a firm believer that you always rig big, right? Especially when it's cold water. I don't want to. I don't want to swim in nine meter. That's my last session as I drowned of hypothermia, uh, pure length out. So you gotta, <laughs> you gotta go big. So I pumped it up. I was, I was a little nervous, you know, especially as I watched Brad right before rig his 12, and he looked pretty powered up. Yeah. Um, but son of a gun, you get that kite in the sky. <laughs> And that is one of the other big benefits of this material is not only on the low end, but the high end. There's so much power control. It's crazy. Yeah. For how light of a kite it is, it's, it's wild. I just have been getting into loops this year and my gosh, it's the easiest kite to loop. Definitely grunt behind it. It isn't just gonna be super, super smooth and buttery like the Rebel. 
Um, it definitely has a little bit of a catch time to it. It does, yeah. But it... It's not like pivoty. No. It, yeah, it, 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 it's just a little bit more swept in its turn. Yep, yep, definitely. And it's a gr all around great kite. You know, we were playing in the waves with it yesterday. Yeah. Um, it's got a decent amount of drift. I would call it more of a wave kite than a foil kite. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I th I'd say it, it stellar all around kite. Yeah, yeah. So we, we spent a bit of time up at the pier um, just testing its boosting ability, doing some tricks. Um, and I had a really, really good time. And it just, it just boosts so big and it's so comfortable. You know, you get up there, you kick it back, you're like, I'm gonna go for a dip. And then you just yank it through the window and it pulls you right out. Or you down loop it and it carries its power pretty well through the turn. It doesn't just dump it all, but it doesn't also pull you off your edge either. Totally. Um, there's just a lot of control that you get. It's kind of a hard concept to describe here on camera, but it's a kite that you feel really, really comfortable with and I feel like it's very in tune with the amount of input you give it Definitely. at the bar level. Um, so yeah, so we, we spent a little bit of time up at the pier, then the fishermen were quite agitated, and we try not to agitate the fishermen. They're out there on a 50 degree day, the water's washing over them, the wind's blowing, they're not catching a dang thing. They're blaming us, they weren't gonna catch anything regardless, but, but out of respect for our fellow human being, we did go down to the waves. Got to share the stove. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, we didn't want any parking lot altercation. That's right. So we go down in the waves. And I was so impressed. For a 13 meter, I was having so much fun playing in the waves. It's always fun being in the waves with a twin tip because you can really just edge into it and hold that power. But I wasn't finding any dead spots with the Evo, especially as I was looping it. Uh, to your point with drifting, um, I'm, I'm excited to try it in a smaller kite. I, I do think it's not like a dedicated surf kite good drift. Um, no. And I, I, I did feel a little bit of lag, but I wasn't sure if that was because it just surges so far forward in the window. And then when I backed off, it immediately kind of pushes back. Um, but I, it wasn't falling out of the sky at any point. Again, going back to the lightness, it does catch itself. Um, it en engages fairly quickly when you give it the bar input. Yep. Um, sometimes kites, there is that lag, and then you just get chomped by a wave, so it's relatively scary. I didn't have that with the Evo. Um, it just drives forward again, gets you right back upwind to where you started, which is really, really nice. And I think that's something that makes it really easy to control on the high end, is because it pushes so far forward in the window, you can edge out a lot of your power really easy. And then if you want it back, you push out and kind of drifts back and sits a little bit further. So when we look at the Evo D-Lab versus all the other Evos. We obviously have the regular Evo. That's gonna sit the furthest back in the window. Yep. Then you have the Evo SLS. That's gonna be a little bit further forward. That is going to be a little bit lighter, a little stiffer than the regular Evo. And then the D-Lab is the top of the line. Um, that's gonna be, I think it, it's it's my favorite free ride kite that I've ridden today. Yep. And I'm just gonna say it, I think it's magical. Yep, going back to that where it sits in the window, the D-Lab's gonna sit the furthest in the window compared to compared to the other two Evos, so. The farthest forward, correct? Farthest yep. forward, yep. yep. Yeah, I was really, really impressed. Um, if we go into a few things that I'm not super hot on with regards to the Evo D-Lab, uh, I think the first thing is the price. Definitely, right off the bat. It's a wee bit ridiculous. Uh, what are we looking at? Like 2,600 to 3,200 based on your size? Yep. Um, the size kite you go with. That, that's a lot of coin. When we got off the water, we were talking about the fact that it does feel like you could almost eliminate a kite size from your quiver. So let's say a traditional quiver would maybe be like 14107. You could potentially go with like a 139 with the Evo D-Lab. Um, and then if you look at quiver savings, it's not quite as ridiculous. I think that's one way to look at it. I think the people who are really, really gonna like this kite are the ones who, like money just isn't that much of an obstacle. Congratulations, <laughs> you've won. Uh, treat yourself, right? This is your trophy, the Evo D Lab. <laughs> I would have a whole quiver of them if it made sense. It's awesome. Uh, and even though you do have a much larger uh, wind range, I think really pairing it in like traditional power bands Oh man, that thing is gonna be sweet like apple pie. Oh yeah. So that's a downside. 
Another kind of silly downside we did talk about on the beach, it's so light that it can blow away. So think about that. When you launch it, um, they've, they've picked that digital theme for this year. Uh, yeah, polka and, dots. Yeah, I'm like, is that freckles? Uh, is that a <laughs> is that a poppy seed muffin in the sky? It's just splattered on randomly. Um, I think when you have a kite that this is, is this expensive. Again, it's such a minor, uh, maybe a petty grievance. But Definitely. like, just just make it look a little nicer, right? Like you just shelled out so much dang money. Yeah. Um, I did find rigging. I had to be a bit more careful, uh, and I should do this in general when I rig out. Like actually roll it all the way out so there's no twists. But I twisted that son of a bee the first time pumping it out because I just dumped it on the sand, started inflating, and the leading edge is so thin it just it just flipped. Yep. So I uh, I thought maybe I was going to be out of luck, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I let out some air. Um, it does have the duotone valve. Uh, love it or hate it. I think most people just tolerate it. It's kind of like Apple. They can dictate what they want for a charging system because their products are epic. That's what duotone feels like. Um, but you got to have the right duotone adapter. I did not yesterday. I was missing the seal. Uh, so it was a two man pump job for a little bit. That's right. You got to remember the dump valve uh, on the wingtip. Minor annoyances. Other than that, you know, I might need to, to ride it a bit more to really focus in on something that I don't like. But I think if I wanted the best all around kite on the market and money was out of the equation, this would be it. Yep. I would totally agree. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. We've been kiting for a long time. There's just something special. Like everything comes together. It feels like the culmination of kiting. Definitely. One thing to note about it is, and, and we didn't touch on this a lot, is with regard to Evo, SLS, and D-Lab, that's really just going to be the leading edge and the struts that that material affects. Um, it's all the Penta TX material in the actual canopy. Um, you're going to save with the D-Lab about 30%, right, in terms of weight. Yep. Um, and the weight is nice, but I think it's really the stiffness and the size of the leading edge that makes the biggest difference. I really look forward to spending more time on this kite this season. Uh, selfishly, I'm going to want to spend more time on it than I'm going to be able to <laughs> because we got to keep get, bringing you guys kite reviews. A caveat to that is if it is out of your budget, don't fret too much. You know, like modern kites are so awesome. They're so much fun to be had, right? Totally. And SLS is a great option too. Yeah. Like, or even the regular Evo. Yeah. Totally. Like there's, it, it's, this know, is like the oh, finely tuned sports exactly. car. Exactly. You're not going to notice a crazy difference. Pros are going to, you know, hop on and be like, okay, this is what's up. But you know, us too, we've been riding for a while, so we kind of can feel it out. But, uh, you know, if you guys are just looking for a great all around kite, you might want to look more towards just the standard Evo, um, or looking to upgrade to the SLS. But if you got the coin, you might as well throw it down. This is it, yep. right? Right. Don't hate us, hate on us too much, please. Like if we <laughs> had to go test ride a Lamborghini, we would probably say it's our favorite car ever, <laughs> but you don't see us driving Lamborghinis. We've just tasted, we've tasted the sweetest fruit. Exactly. And we're hooked. <laughs> we're hooked. We love it. Guys, check out the Evo D-Lab if you have the chance. Uh, if it's not in the budget, befriend somebody who it is because they'll probably upgrade next year and maybe you can buy theirs for a song. <laughs> um, you know, there were always some concerns about the longevity of the material and we really haven't seen that um, bore out. So you should, you should be able to scoop one up in the future for a great price. It's a really, really fun kite. But these days, all kites are fun. Guys, as always, thanks for checking us out. This has been Jake. And Dustin. With Matt Kite.